heavy metal was like on a par with country and western as far as I was concerned when I was about 14, 15. I used to hate it, detest it. And then, towards the end of 84, early 85, bands like Metallica had started making big waves, so to speak, in the hardcore scene. What about Slayer? Do you think that they had a similar impact? Yeah, even more yeah, so. Yeah, more they were the, shocking, they were, they were really... Yeah. Yeah. Completely completely just over the top, like, that was, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I was just shocked by the whole death metal thing, really, the lyrics and everything. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't, couldn't take it in at first, but I just got really into it after a while. Where did you first hear about it? And just... What, what was it that you found so shocking about it? Just the, f the fact that it was like... As, as extreme as like most of the hardcore bands we were listening to at the time, and it was like came from a totally different area. They'd always fight, follow minor scales rather than major scales because it sounds completely. Um, it's just a traditional rock thing kind of thing to do to go from like E to A to D and all these uh, happy sounding chord progressions. Slayer and bands, you know, and earlier bands like Sabbath and Venom, they tried to avoid that. What, they tried to sound sadder. Um, I don't think sad's the word. Just um, evil. I think that's what they were aiming for. Just something that sounded really brutal. Essentially, sing like that because it's the only it's the only way I think I can sing to the music we're playing. Really, don't see how I can sing any other way. You can't sing any other way, can you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't see I don't see how you can though. No, yeah. no, you couldn't. Wouldn't That's the music. The you know what I mean? It's it's the most mm. aggressive form. Mm. It's uh, how yeah. else could you? Ex what other vocals could be fit? Yeah, I don't think we could. Uh, we couldn't hire, hire Joey Belladonna in for a session just mm. to do vocals on the album or anything. Because I mean, it just wouldn't work.
Hardcore's based in punk, isn't it? Yeah, so, it's I mean, an extension of it, I suppose, really. Yeah. I mean, the term hardcore came from America, really. Yeah. Mm. It's like bands like Black Flag, Bad Brains and Circle Jerks, mm. like early 80s and stuff. But I suppose Discharge were classed as a hardcore band. They were mm. the only damn cash UK in disorder. Mm. That came from England. From well. England, the first three English as actually classed as hardcore. You got Discharge. Mm. Yeah. And there's still bits of That's Discharge in our music now. So oh, yeah. yeah. Satanism was gradually abandoned in metal. You know, for a while it was really fashionable. Yeah. Now it's totally the opposite. It's unfashionable to sing about Satan. Oh yeah. It's uh, you know, it's kind of nondescript in metal, even in metal. And uh, there's less doing it now. And uh, I can see the same thing happening with the speed thing. For a while, people think it's a, you know, it's a novelty and uh, this is the way to go. You know, we'll, we'll automatically be good mm -hmm. and aggressive if we play fast. But um, I think slowly it'll you know it'll fade out, and um, you know, only the bands that really are into it and the bands that really can yeah. do it will, will continue to do so. I think the crowd now is like totally new. I mean, people used to come to gigs, say, three or four years ago, like one well, our gigs, but you know, say other thrash hardcore gigs or something. Mm. I think a lot of them have like disappeared and just like yeah, totally just gone their own way. Yeah, and it seems to be like a totally new crowd we've got coming to see bands like us now. Mm. So if Satanism's gone out of the window, then what's what's it fashionable to sing about now? Or <laughs> it's it almost some, almost fashionable to write about. Social stuff, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, way? Social, social subjects yeah. is the um, it's pretty fashionable, like trendy it, thing yeah. at the moment. The typical cop out is you know writing about nuclear wars. War. But it's so it's so <laughs> it's worse that's, than that's saying, cropped it? up though yeah. so many times. I know, it's war really easy singing. just you know. And I don't know, you know, you know, you can't Third really slag off bands for doing it if they want to do that. Then you know, fine. But um, I don't know. I think it's just too easy to write songs yeah, about it's that really now dogmatic way of because they think they can please both the metal fans because it's kind of you know. Uh, you know, we can write about um, some stuff that's uh, that's shocking, at this, while at the same time kind of pandering to, to the interests of those who yeah. who uh, actually uh, want to write, some, read something that has some meaning.
Whoa, awesome, dude. Are those boys fast or what? Let's hope they don't have the same problem in their personal lives, if you know what I mean. Boy, the only thing Napalm Death does faster than play songs is change their lineup. They've already got a new singer and guitarist since that concert was filmed. And I can't see why they changed singers. Maybe that guy finally coughed up whatever was stuck in his throat. Anyway, join me tomorrow night for our last visit to Heavy Metal Heaven, where you can see Def Leppard in the no-holds-barred story of how they became one of the biggest bands in the universe. Until then, darling, this is Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, wishing you unpleasant dreams.